Now, becoming a new parent is uh, certainly life-changing, and while it can be stressful enough just adjusting to the little one in the house, feelings of being overwhelmed, frustrated and vulnerable are heightened by the pressures that parents place on themselves to be the perfect parent. And we're joined now by our sleep expert, Lucy Wolf, along with new mum of now two, Sarah Ring, and 11-week-old baby, Indy. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Lucy, I'm, I, we'll, get, we'll get to you very shortly, Sarah. Um, explain this thing about the perfect parent and how getting your child to sleep and into a routine and all the rest of it is so tied into your kind of your your view of yourself as a parent. I know and it is and again I really felt strongly today that we're always here talking about problems unfortunately where sleep is concerned and yet with a new baby we don't actually really consider anything that they do in the context of their sleep to actually be a problem in these first few months. We really just feel it's very often typical infant sleep but and we parents. feel that if it's going wrong, it's that yeah, we do. aren't getting it right. Yeah, like lots of parents would use the words like they feel like they're failing, they feel like they're doing everything wrong. And I'm just at pains this year specifically to try to help families feel far more reassured far more confident and to trust their instincts. We've lost that hugely. And I suppose to reframe the thinking and that to try to allow their newborn experience where sleep is concerned to be far more baby led. And of course the parents can be doing things, but it's not about right or wrong, but it is about trying to find your own way as a new parent and developing your skills as a parent, getting to know your baby and to take what it is what you're experiencing as being just typical and normal and part of the journey as we are. Well, if you were in a relationship with any other human being and you were making the decisions about what was right and what was wrong without taking them into consideration, the relationship wouldn't last very long, would it? No, and that's the thing. And, and I this really is what we do feel, with babies. Yeah, and I feel that really our primary task is about building relationship, getting to know your baby, getting the, allowing them to get to know you and just to focus on that and not to focus on all the background noise about what a baby should be doing, how much they should sleep or not, and just to lean into what the experiences that you're having where your new baby is concerned. Okay. A lot of the questions you will get is, is she a good baby? Is she sleeping? Do, have you found that, Sarah, that the people are Absolutely. just asking all yeah. the time? Yeah, and I suppose it's the biggest change when you are a parent is trying to get to know your baby, but possibly doing that on very little sleep as well. So. It is one of the first questions, absolutely, that people ask. Well, no, you're not a complete novice. I mean, you, yeah. you have Ollie. We do. So you have been through uh, this yes. once before. But, of course, it, you think because you know one that you know them all and they're all completely different. That's, completely different. Absolutely. That's the first thing you learn ab about number two is, is that it's not the same and it's a different blueprint. So what, did, did you have issues with India or did you feel overwhelmed? Did you feel that you weren't doing something right or...? Um, I think there's always pressures. You're, you're getting it from everywhere, from social media, from other new parents, from what you think is the ideal as well. You've got a certain amount of pressure on yourself too. So as Lucy said, it's, you know, it's leaving those behind for a little while and just focusing. They're so small for so such a little part of time. And having Ollie reminds me of, you know, they get they get big so quickly. So you do want to just get to know them. And but it's hard at times to to not feel the pressure of, am I doing everything right? Am I doing the best for her, for Ollie? So it's just getting that balance. Okay, so I don't want to use the word problem, but what was the issue with Indy? I suppose our current issue with Indy is um, the evening times. Um, we start off the day pretty well, but um, once the evening comes, you're trying to get dinner, you're trying to get Ollie to bed, and by the time seven o'clock comes, she's just exhausted and we're, I think it's called the witching hour. We're pacing the floor kind of between seven and nine every evening. Mm -hmm. um, and she's tired, but she's fighting it. Will be the big problem. And Lucy, as we know from uh, your, your many seminars, on yeah. the beach, if you allow the baby to get overtired, uh, yeah, sleep it's, I do think that that witching hour, it's a very common term. And sometimes it's, a, it's, it's attributed to a colic um, presentation. And that can be real. But very often, it's a cumulative overtiredness. And it start, you start the day well, and we talked about this earlier. They do start the day well, but 
as the day unfolds, Indy becomes a little bit more overtired. And then by the time she gets to seven o'clock, her body can't cope anymore. The body now is resisting everything and they're pacing and walking. And again, I suppose that's very normal as well. Kids want to be up in your arms. They benefit from being held a lot, cuddled a lot. But there are a few things that obviously Sarah can start doing to try and prevent that overtired cycle from developing in the evening time. So even if we just look, put a little bit of um, emphasis on on getting some more sleep throughout the course of the day. Roll her, hold her, sling her, you know, maybe have her sleeping within every one and a half to two hours as the day unfolds. And that will prevent the t having that, this massive sleep pressure building up and then India being really difficult to settle until nine or 10 o'clock at night. So again, it's, it's only ever small adjustments that we need. And that, let's like, say I've talked about getting to know your baby, uh, we get them to know their cues, their hunger call, but also their signal for sleep. Because they are master communicators. They tell us absolutely everything we need to know, but we need to be able to decode that. And as, as you said earlier, Sarah, like that's hard to do when you're sleep deprived because your judgment is affected when you are finding your way. And again, this is where I feel it's really important that we draft in support. We share the load, we ask for help. And again, that's not always possible, but we need to find, you need to, almost need to find a little tribe of people that will help because we're, we've moved away from the village, haven't we? And again, it does, yeah. takes more than one person. Is the, is the sleep then the kind of crux of it? So even if you're breaking, I don't want to use the word rule, but even if you're kind of going against some of the standard things, like, you know, don't get her used to sleeping in your arms, don't, you know, get her used to... But if you, she's getting to sleep, that's the most important and that's thing. And that's what I really feel is so important in these first few months, that if baby wants to be held, hold your baby, rock your baby, roll your baby, g give them that, that secure cycle or circle, however we... And then the more secure they feel, actually, the more open they will be to being put down. So you will be able to shift away oh, from absolutely. that. Oh, like absolutely. Again, I always talk about this age range that I'm saying lean into it, embrace it, but also work behind the scenes because there are things that you can be doing without putting yourself under massive pressure that help to lay what I describe as being a positive foundation mm -hmm. for, for, for sleep practices. But I don't like parents to feel... Like, I meet parents and they say to me, oh, my baby is three months old, I know they should be sleeping through the night. No, they absolutely shouldn't be sleeping through the night. And if they're feeding once, twice, three times or more in the overnight, that's really typical. And again, their sleep is in a 24-hour context. It's not yet mm -hmm. in that sort of I ideal 12 and 12 di dynamic. Yeah, the, the, Sarah, there, there, there's another baby in this too. I have to remember, Ali's what, two? Yeah. He's yeah. just, he's H about three, sleep? two and a half. <laughs> well, this is how we came upon Lucy. About seven or eight months, when Ollie was about seven or eight months, we were desperate. We, he was not a good sleeper. And we were getting up seven, eight times a night. And we came upon Lucy's book. And uh, the rest is history. He's now a great sleeper for, in the main. You know, we have odd, odd nights here or there, but he goes to bed well. And that he's consistent and we're consistent with him as much as we can. Yeah, but it's only two months ago and in Ollie's world, that's only last week, yeah. that he was Indy. Yeah. And that's an adjustment for him. Mm -hmm. And now you've got to juggle the two of those, so... Yeah, it, it's tricky, um, but they get on very well. He's very good with Indy. I suppose his, his, the big thing for him was sharing mum and dad was tricky for him. He's very good with her, but for two years it was just him, and now it's not. Has there been any changes to his sleep pattern? He hasn't reacted at all, has he? Um, no, I wouldn't say so, thank God. No, he's in a good routine, okay. thank God. Even right. during the witching hour, he hasn't... He's in bed. <clears throat> he's, he's gone. I, and it is difficult because in that evening time, I could describe that evening time as being a competition of needs where everybody needs something and you can only give so much of yourself. And again, this is where sharing the load comes into play. I would be hoping that maybe we can di di diminish that cycle of the witching hour for uh, this family by just maybe making some adjustments throughout the course of the day. And it is possible that Indy is ready for a slightly earlier bedtime now. Um, so, you know, <coughs> bedtime in the early few months actually is super late. It's your bedtime. So they kind of have hang around with you until you go to bed. That could be anything between 10 and 12 o'clock, depending on the child. And again, between, somewhere between birth and 16 weeks, that actually slowly gets earlier and earlier, biologically. And if we don't adjust that, then the child becomes more overtired and resistance is, is high. Yep. And I have a feeling that Indy is getting there right. a little bit sooner than her peers yes. and that maybe we need to start looking yes. at an earlier onset well, of sleep. We will well. follow your progress with, uh, with great interest, but tip number one, if you take one thing away from this morning is, 
baby led. Follow Absolutely. the baby. Absolutely. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a, a, an article on my website just to cover my suggestions for these first few months. To okay. Just People can get that at? Sleepmatters.ie. Okay. Thank you both Thank very you. much. It's lovely Thank to meet you. you. Thanks, sir. Right. Uh, coming up next, we're going to be checking out this uh, week's new movie releases and finding out what's worth watching. See you in a few moments.